So the final case that we look at is when the roots of d of s may be complex conjugates of each other. This could happen if you have a quadratic term in d of s, and that discriminant is less than 0. So for example, if you have this for y of s, then to see if you have complex conjugate roots, you apply the quadratic formula to find those roots. So those roots of d of s in this case would be s equals minus 1 half a plus or minus 1 half times the square root of a squared minus 4b. Now in the case in which the discriminant is negative, we're still going to have to convert this to a form found in the Laplace transform tables, even though the quadratic form can't be factored out. So to do this, we begin by completing the square of s squared plus as by adding and subtracting from the bottom 1 quarter a squared. So then we have y of s is equal to 1 over the quantity s squared plus as plus 1 quarter a squared plus b minus 1 quarter a squared. Now that is in the form of 1 over s plus a squared plus omega squared. Now to get this into a form recognized by Laplace transform tables, we want omega in numerator. So to find omega in the numerator, we're going to factor out 1 over the, uh, the square root of b minus 1 fourth a squared out front so that we can have omega, the square root of b minus 1 quarter, 1 quarter a squared in the numerator. And the denominator, what we'll have is s plus 1 half a quantity squared plus omega squared. Therefore, we have now put y of s into the form of y of s is equal to some constant times omega all divided by the quantity s plus capital A squared plus omega squared. Now if we look up that in our inverse Laplace transform table, we'll find that this maps to a function y of t is equal to our constant, which is out front, times e to the minus capital A t times the sine of omega t. So taking what we have in the previous line and inverting that back into the time domain, we get y of t is equal to our constant out front. Now it just happens to be 1 over omega, but it doesn't have to be. But in this case it was. So we get our constant out front times e to the minus little a t over 2 because um, the, the capital A here was little a over 2 times the sine of our omega times t. Now because of the sine function, you can tell that we're going to see oscillations in our solutions, in our solution. Now these oscillations are not commonly seen open, in open loop systems, but if we, as we've discussed already, they can be quite common in feedback systems and it's something that we'll see in the next couple of chapters.